Hey, man. Alright, go. On. So the period we got we got up to is everyone has leveled up. Um, sitting around a campfire, you've all enjoyed your food, you're all feeling refreshed, and that's when we sort of stopped it there. Um, Tarek has come down with Lady, and Tarek wants to, wants to speak to you directly. Um, he has one more sort of request from you before um, before you can speak to Inara again. They, they need something uh, to be fulfilled for them. Oh, so, Lady. Oh, I forgot my notes. Let's <laughs> 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 double check. Can you actually see Lady and Tarek there? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So Lady has come down and she gave you those braces just now, which is um, pure. Yeah. Cool. She's like, I made these for you. They are very strong, powerful. You should be very happy with these, Kilbo. And she hands you these two beautiful, shiny red braces. They're quite unique, but they don't have a name, so you'll have to name them yourself. I'm sure I'll think of something. Please let me know what you call him. And I will tell Miley. Miley's not here at the moment. They've all gone out fishing and doing their tasks. So it's just me and Tarek. But let me know what you call him. Uh, will do. Miley then says, before Tarek talks to you as well, I need to give you something. I need to give you a map. Yes, that's right. Yes, Tarek, a map. And then she goes to her pocket and gives you a map of the island. So you can see actually what Stormwick Isle looks like. I'm going to drop it into the Discord for you for now. It's in the handouts as well. Put it in the chat. It appear in there? No, it did not. I should drop in there again. There we go. Uh -huh. So this is Stormwreck mm. Isle. So good. do the... Yeah, so Dragon's Rest is located... So you see where the sort of cove is, where it curves to the centre and north. The massive big sort of cove. Mm. This is where Dragon's Rest is located. Where you previously helped fix the Wreck of the Compass Rose, that's the very top little island of all the individual islands to the north as well. So that's where the Wreck of the Compass Rose was, which you've now solved, which has now obviously stopped the zombies and the harpies. And the Chris, um, the ships crashing. Now, Eric comes over. Yobo, we are bonded by. At last, iPad, don't do that. That's annoying. You didn't say that. Let me put that on silent. <laughs> Tarek was very advanced technology-wise with his iPad. Um, um, he says, I need some... Bless you. I need your help. With a task. To the south of the island is the sea grow pain. Now, I normally go there quite often to pick up some... I'll be forward again. I pick up some hard cap mushrooms. Now, these are quite handy. They help me make different potions that I use for healing. But my last recent trip, I had to, I had to stop. In the, in just before we entered the cave, there was a strange monstrosity. It looked, I don't know what it was, like a giant fungus being, or maybe some kind of octopus, maybe? It was a bit, a bit crazy to see, but I didn't risk it. But it worried me because 
The Mykonids that live there are normally very, very friendly, hospitable, kind, and we have a nice exchange. But I don't know why they, why either they would put that beast there, or if someone else has put the beast there. So I need your help. If you could kindly investigate the area to me on the south of the map, on the south of the island, and report back to me what is going on. Kilbert, I want to give you this to carry as well. If it's too heavy, then give it to the other guys, but he hands you um, this big stack of foul smelling food scraps. The Mikin is like this as a gesture of friendship. Um, carry the sack and please give it to him. Otherwise, they won't know if you're friendly or hostile. Um, I do apologize for the smell. It is, is atrocious, but they love it. The fun guys love it. But don't call them fun guy all the time. And he hands you this big stack of the stinkiest rotten food scraps for you to carry and give to the Mykonids. Who, uh, Kilbo gives it to, um, uh, <laughs> just got in your character's name now. Uh, <laughs> I've lost it. Do you mean uh, the Devan. big muscly man? Yeah, the big muscly man can carry that. Um, <laughs> also, I need to, I need to be right back. Hold it sense. like a baby nappy. Right. Now I'm in front. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to drop another map. Hmm? It's just, yeah, it's just food yeah, scraps bag, and... Like a bag of compost, basically, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Awesome. Um, dead, which dead which they love. For, for mushroom things, yeah. Yeah. And it's it's a gesture of um, goodwill. There's another map now that Lady passes over and she gives it to Tree. I'll just drop it in. I have found it now. Eric said to give you this. This is the map of the Seagro Caves. It's very useful, so just keep the map with you when you need it. Um, Tarek then says, thank you, lady, for your assistance, as always. <laughs> the tides are currently low, so I advise to take the coastal route round. It takes about seven hours on foot. It shouldn't be too long. You can do it within a day. In the evenings, the tide raises quite high. So I advise to go now, as soon as possible. So you've got the map of Stormwake Isle. You'll be going down to the very south of the island. And the Seagro Caves map is what you have as well as an idea of what caves are actually like. Just wait for Kilbo to return. Whilst we're waiting for uh, Kilbo to return, um, the temple that's at the top of all the stairs that we went to, first of all, is yes. that the temple that Devan was supposed to go to? Yes. Right, so when we were there, we were kind of hastily moved down the steps towards the ship to go to that big ship, right? Yes, so yes. How big is that thing to be sorted? Like, can it be sorted before we go? Would it be helpful? <laughs> yes, I mean, everybody has left Dragon's Rest at the moment. And this is probably the last thing I need you to help me with. We are very thankful for how you dealt with the zombies. But these so, micronids so. are very important. But we can't leave them. And this monstrosity that I saw... It's not something I can ignore anymore. I'm not as nimble as I once was. Right, yes, 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 yes. Uh, yes, yes. Well, well, he seems to be uh, uh, back within himself now. <laughs> so, just to tell you, Kilbo, Lady's dropped a map in which she gave to Tree to hold, and that is the map of the cave. When you get to the south, you've been advised to take the coastal route why the tide is low. Um. Right, and what are we getting for this anyway? <laughs> well, as you are very well aware that um, I can make potions from this. 
I also helped remove all your hair. <laughs> so uh, I'd like to think that we have a mutual friendship now. And maybe you can ask me a bit more about the history of my the past. Maybe I can help you in the future with your own decisions. That's not really quick. <laughs> right. Well. How did I do? I didn't understand a word of that. What are you saying to me? <laughs> uh, uh, nothing, nothing. I'm just thinking to myself. Rather aloud. <laughs> lady then, lady then goes. Oh, yes, yes. I've got. Miley's not here, but she asked me to give you a little treat each. Um, Zark's gonna bring it down to me, and um, oh, you're gonna love it. It's so, it's so fantastic. So Zark runs down, and he's like, eh, "Eat my shorts. It's not breath. <laughs> that stinkers." And then he <laughs> gives Lady his bag, and then goes, <laughs> "Skunk breath," and runs off. The lady, charming, says, charming, before charming, you go, charming. you asked me to help make something for you, to give you, well, to first identify what they were, but then to make something for you, to make you strong and powerful. And I think this may help you in your next mission. And she hands you a bottle each. She says, drink them together, feel strong. She gives you these little bottles each. A bit like, um, have you ever seen um, Big Trouble in Little China? When um, he makes the magical concoction in the lift and then they all go smoking, they all knock it and he's like, you can see things other people can't see, do things no one else can do. Real things? <laughs> as real as Lil Pan. Um, it's a bit like that. Uh, is this a drug? <laughs> no, these are... Herbal. I put them together. You should feel full of vitality, strength, awareness. Uh, uh, should we drink this now or later? I'm drinking it now. <laughs> okay. The lady gets one as well and she says, put them together in celebration and goodwill. And then she takes the drink of hers. Ah, Bahamut, yes. Bahamut. Mm. Tarek is like, Bahamut. <laughs> he's, he's got his own botanical thing he's drinking. Bahamut. Kilwood just goes, gold. And... <laughs> <laughs> so everybody's had a sip of their drink, or met their drinks. Did you drink I yours, Tree? Why everyone's drinking? She says, "Why I raise a toast to you all? What is your famous group called?" <laughs> no, you must have a name as a group of heroes. Well, uh, I'm not sure if mine fits. I, I, I came to me in a dream, and I, I woke up and I laughed. Rather silly. Yeah, the misfits of misadventure. Yes, yes. <laughs> the misfits of misadventure. Quite a mouthful, but it's it works. That's what she said. Mm. <laughs> also, mum's the word. <laughs> misfits of uh, uh, misadventure. Yeah, mama. Uh, yeah, mama. So you're called mama. <laughs> Mooma. So you then hear sniggering in the background. And then you know it's Zark, and he's like... And you hear it echoing through Dragon's Rest as he runs up with his foots, laughing. And then... You all sort of, um... Start getting up pickups and feelings in your stomach. And maybe he's like... She's like, oh... Oh, that's a bit of an aftertaste. I don't recognise that. That wasn't in my concoction. Nah. <laughs> and then suddenly, unbeknownst to you all, 
different things happen to each person. Astrid, vocal cords start to tighten and pinch, where she now can only talk like she has the voice of a mouse. Hilbo tries to speak and realises that when he tries to speak, he can only speak backwards. <laughs> so every time he's the sentence, it's in reverse. Three, <laughs> <laughs> as the opposite, her voice starts to widen. Hello. So Tree suddenly has like the deepest of deep voices. Almost like the effects oh, of no. Barry White. Zark, in the distance, is crying and rolling and laughing. And Lady's like, oh my, I didn't do this. I think Zark has been up to his mischief again. Oh. And then... Devan gets one which I labelled Gut Rot Firehorn. And this comes with extra bonuses as a Gut Rot Firehorn. So, when you're walking, you have to roll a d20. So, if you roll a 1, your fart will release a fireball, 1d6 fire damage to anyone directly behind them within 5 feet. If you get a five, the fart produces a smell so bad that each character within five feet has to do a saving throw against poison or get one damage. Um, if you get a ten, or get a ten between five and ten, the fart produces a huge sound which alerts anyone in the local area to your stealth. Um, but if you roll a d20 and you get a perfect 20, natural 20, you can actually use a firebomb to fire your fart 25 feet away. That's pretty so roll a d20. Seven. Alright, so you've gone through it straight away. Um, so yeah, you're not far. That rock fire hole. You roll a seven. So that would be, it produces a noise so loud that anyone in the local area would hear it. So it's a bit like a... Oh. <laughs> So, if you were trying to do a sneak attack, you've now got to be aware that your um, trumps either can cause damage to others. <laughs> when does that happen? It's random. Okay, so you choose. You tell me when it happens. I I'll do little rolls, and then I will roll to let you know if you need to do one. So it's basically it's the same as usual. He's go just going to be louder than usual, maybe. <laughs> Slightly. Yeah. And if someone... <laughs> the other party needs to be aware of that randomly, if they're standing directly behind you, they could get a whack of fire fart or they could as get well, a poisonous gas. As, we as well as? I thought yeah. it was... Or, or okay. No, so, so if, you, if, you rolled a, if you rolled a one, whoever's directly standing okay. behind you... Gets fire damage. If they're yeah. if it's three knees, right. um, two, that, three, four, or five, then it's a better. poisonous gas. Even better, I just did a five foot fire. radius. So if, if they're about ten foot away, they're safe from both of them. So, so it's like a uh, uh, fan of flames, like. Uh... <laughs> it can be, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> so what if I walk backwards? Oh, if they're standing in front of you, they still get it. <laughs> Yeah, we don't know this is going to happen yet, do we? <laughs> this is funny, if, it, if it's a random thing, but like... Maybe so they can yeah. hold you as like a, a flamethrower or something, I don't know. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, fair enough. So it's a random thing. Would I yeah. would I get an inkling or would it just happen? It would just happen. You'll get you'll get told to <laughs> make a roll. So, so, a girl's so always started. It's D&D and Jenny Belly. <laughs> Kilbo can try and talk to you, but it's backwards, and the other two have voices that are too low and too high. 
<laughs> by backwards, is it like my sentences are backwards, like sort of like Yoda ish, or is it more like Yoda? Okay. Oh, okay. That means I'm just going to have to sit in five minutes, work That's out what I'm saying. That's so bad. Like, I. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, people like, this, definitely. <laughs> um, how are you today, Devon? Um, my name is Kilbo. It would be Kilbo Devon. Today, you are how? Uh, things like that. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. <laughs> well, uh... Towards the Seagro Caves. Nope. I tried a bit of a bit of a lag spike then. Both of you, both of you two just went, oh. I think everyone did for a moment. That's the gut roll. So, where's that then? So you've arrived at. Oh, we're at the caves. As so this, magic. you're on the beach. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you've been walking seven hours. So you left at seven in the morning, so it's now two o'clock, it's midday, and you've arrived at this sort of cove. Um, sandy beaches, you can see steam water in the distance. See this little reader at the bit as well. Um, Billowing clouds of steam emerge from the rocks ahead, and the air grows thicker with moisture. As you round a bend, you see a cove where a hot spring burbles up from the rocks and spills into a pool before draining into the ocean. The turquoise water is luminescent and the grey basalt edges of the spring are lined with vibrantly coloured mushrooms, which occasionally burst in a shower of rainbow spores. Oh, Did you like Shakespeare? Think so. Rainbow spores. <laughs> Let me just double check are these. Something's yep. one very obvious around here. So what do you wish to do? Uh, I I don't want to go first. I, I I have a feeling that I may have an accident. That 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 potion sort of went straight through me and I'm wearing too much armor to just let me work out my sentence Hold on. go somewhere <laughs> so if more like more. Here. <laughs> <laughs> if you do a perception check anybody you can sort of see how deep that water is as you go around the cove um, perception Look, A, have, and in sneak, could I? It's better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> ben, so water is five foot, five foot deep all the way through, leading up to the edges. It goes obviously deeper, but the deepest part is five foot. Kilbo has asked you a question, by the way. <laughs> uh, if I understood correctly, he wonders if he can sneak in. Oh, I <laughs> um, you say the water's five foot. Yes. So you're I'd drowned, have to Kilbo. Don't go in. Don't go in. You're drowned. I'd have you to can swim. walk. The pathway is still walkable as well. So your sand leads into this like basalt rock, and there's like this fungus fungi growing around the outskirts as well. Activate sneak mode. Here, 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 Kilbo, take this. <laughs> Froze a sack of compost at him. Uh, <laughs> I rolled a... Gurgles a bit. <laughs> so, Kim, a free and Kilbo. I think Kilbo's already got it still, but if you haven't got it, add inspiration. Tree, add your inspiration because you've used your deep voice as well. <laughs> if people remember to stay in their, that character part, they can keep getting their inspirations boosted as well. Oh, great. I've got two lots of inspiration. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a full team okay, to sneak in uh, on um, roll not roll d20 d mm d -hmm. beyond there's a little box next to speed oh. you can click inspiration and if you've got inspiration you get a little sun uh -huh. right 
Um, I I'm still wanting to hear Ashwin talk. Yeah, Ashwin's gone quiet since she's, she's had to go high pitched. <laughs> Somebody asked Ashwin a question. <laughs> right. So um, yeah, your sneaking does work here as well. Cool. You can sneak round the bend into the area. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. Uh, Ashwin, do you do you want to go next? <laughs> I'll go next. Who rolled the perception check as well, sorry? After. Is that cool? 30. Astrid. Uh, right, so Astrid. Right. You need to tell you need to tell everybody this. Um when you look across the water, you notice these. So when you look across the water, you notice know like shimmering outlines of what you know to be fume drakes so you tell the party what you've seen i didn't, see I didn't hear what you said what are they called fume drakes it's on the screen there you should be able to see the name fume drake and it's like the light looks like silhouettes of smoke in the water Green. <laughs> so these are fume drakes shimmering in, in the shimmering. water around you. They're not aware of you yet. Is there just the three? What, yeah. Yeah. Just the three. Yeah. What do you wish to do? Uh, that was smoky. I want to look at the fungi. I mean, I, I, I you want to observe the fungi? <laughs> <laughs> so you can approach the fungi, the first parts, if you want, wherever you want to go to. Is it the sparkly? Sparkly, colourful figures. Yeah, the shiny, bright colours. These are the different types of. Fun guy that's around there. Um, so you're checking. If you roll a nature check for me. Yep. If anybody does check them, you can roll a nature check. Um, okay, so you're not quite sure what they are by looking at them. Um, so Kilgo knows what they are. So Kilbo can tell everybody. <laughs> um, you can explain to everybody that what they are is a rare fungus with a unique magical property. I'll keep it simple like that because if I put the rest of the explanation in, it might take a while. <laughs> I'll tell a bit after. Yeah, uh, property magical a eh, with fungus rare are these. Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> they always look at you blankly like. <laughs> so these uh, rare fungus, yes, yes, yes. So <laughs> when a creature. Squeezes a wind spore mushroom, which is what they're called. It releases a small, small cloud of spores, which means for one hour, the creature doesn't need to breathe. Oh, do I know spore, this? As the yeah, as the spores will provide you with oxygen. But the wind spores are also worth thirty gold pieces. Yoink. <laughs> so. Uh, First of all, yoink. Second of all, um, <laughs> I grab some and just start squeezing them in people's faces. <laughs> so, to half harvest these, um, you need to roll a 2d4. If anybody wants to harvest, you have to roll a 2d4. Six. But you also need to approach the mushrooms as well directly with stand next to them. Um, 
So you pick him up. Um, the fun is like. So you get stiff. Slowly edging in and towards. <laughs> he's not going. He's going to behind everyone else. <laughs> it doesn't feel too good. So you've got six of these, so you can use it one at a time, or they are worth 30 gold pieces. I'll each. pocket two and square four. So I'll so me if anybody spaces. wants to grab these and roll for them, you can take the okay. amount you want now. So tree got three. Um, Astrid, if you roll with, if you're going to look at them as well, roll a 2D, pardon me, 2D4, and the same for the Vaughn as well. Do you get free wind spores? Do I wind, to they're spin? called wind spore mushroom cap, and they're worth 30 gold pieces each, or you can breathe underwater, or not have to breathe for one hour, but you have to use it. Actually, Kilbert is just going to do it on himself, and then say... Um... Uh, uh, hour one, breathe to. Oh, wait, hold on. Hour one, breathe to have don't. One hour. I don't do nice. <laughs> <laughs> So you don't have to breathe for one hour. And because he's five foot as well, the water, well, he's, I don't know exactly, but the water's five foot deep. It now means technically you could stand in the water and not have to worry as well. Kilbo's like three um, foot or something. He just... Because have you all, have you all um, took note of your um, spores? As soon as you touch the spores, the fume drakes trigger a reaction and they're not happy. So anybody can roll for roll for initiative. No, because I can't find the thing. Am I Seven. a halfling or what am I? You're a light foot halfling, yeah. Okay, I'm a halfling. Probably working out height. Well we got here then. Who's rolled what? Okay, so Kilbo's what? like three foot. <laughs> I want to see a two for one. <laughs> Ashley rolled a one. Seven. Uh, nine. Uh, Kilbo, nine. Greg. Three got What'd you 20. roll, Greg? Three got a Greg's not here. Oh, I said, because it's kind of minus two on Greg on my screen, don't I? Um, Tree got a 20. You got a natural 20, didn't you? I saw a 20. Where's Devon? <laughs> 30, 20, she got. Where's Devon's one? Oh, seven. Okay, it's triggering. So three will go first. You have got these few drakes now, staring right in front of you. Uh. uh let me just try and. Am I supposed to be fighting them? Sorry? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> They were they were quite calm yeah, until they saw the mushrooms get taken and it triggered their um their fight response. Okay. Do fight do fight a thing. Okay. <laughs> I would like to use my long bow and go actually smash yeah. with the long bow. I think when we get the ability to, I think Tree should uh, multi spec into Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting. Um, Specialise in archery, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe even crossbow. <laughs> oh, I think there's a. Yeah. Really cool... yeah. You rolled a stick with your longbow, so this, you pull back your bow, you fire at them, and it just mixes, passes through, skims off the water. Oh. <laughs> but if you. If you take away your inspiration now, remove your inspiration, you can roll twice. You roll for advantage, but you have to remove your inspiration to do that. Wait, 
So all that, all of that again. Your inspiration. What it means is when you put it on your sheet as a like when you marked it, that means you can roll twice. It gives you an advantage. So if you take it off your sheet, you can roll again. Okay. Oh, you don't have to. You can keep it for another time. Up to you, Ed, when you use inspiration, whenever you want. Sorry, I'm a bit lost. I'm yeah. switching between the app and the desktop thing again. Oh, she should go sharpshooter. <laughs> Uh, now, one of the things on that is before you make an attack, uh, you can take a penalty of minus five to the roll, but if it hits, you do plus ten damage. <laughs> oh, wow. It is. Uh, or go crossbow the... expert, and therefore you can shoot things in the face. Just... Point blank. That's very tree, though. Tree Point likes that. Mm. So did my first bow not hit? No. Your well, first shot I... missed. So you can leave it at that, or you can use your inspiration and roll again. Okay. So I rolled, rolled a nine, 19? Yeah, I, I rolled to hit. Oh, sorry. I did my damage. Wait. I didn't see that. All I saw was a six. Yeah, before <laughs> so that. Like, oh. Six damage. First one hit, yeah. The first one hit, yeah. <laughs> six damage. I was about Which to one panic was you... and run away. <laughs> yeah. was Which nine. one did you aim for? Uh, the one closest to me. <laughs> Uh, number one, yeah? Yeah. And you hit for six damage. So, yeah, so the arrow, ignore what I said, the arrow hits it. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's Hume Drake, number three. They can move 30 foot, but they can also fly 30 foot as well. Oh, what did I get at level two? So this is number three. Um, yeah. Comes Thanks. forward and stops there. The next one, which is this one, comes across to oh. Three, four, five, six. There. Next go. One thing I want to say now, though, while Kilbo's standing there, um, if you roll one of your hit dice, it doesn't matter your full health. Mm. Plus your, your constitution modifier, that is the healing you get from that water if you're within the water for 10 minutes. Oh. So, so what is it? Um, so your hit dice plus your constitution modifier. Oh, 1d8 plus... Because oh. you've been in that water, technically, that sort of time, 10 minutes, you now heal. <laughs> I am uh, now in mortar. You, it, <laughs> if you're not in the water, you can't heal. But if you if your health drops, technically you can get in that water for 10 minutes, you can then roll to get your health up. Devon, before next go, we need you to roll your d20 for your um, gas effect. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll roll it in there. Mm. Luckily, it's he's, he's not in proximity of no one. Mm. Where's Nine? Astrid gone? No. Yeah. yeah, where's a token gone? Yeah. I can see it. Me. Not the Where are you? Are you hidden under someone? There uh, she is. Just... <laughs> oh, there she is. That's Hiding it, yeah. under the tree. <laughs> you rolled a nine, so that means oh. it just produces a rumble. So you're standing there, and then next minute, all everyone hears is a. <laughs> and then the rocks sort of shake a bit. The water shimmers, and you're like, oh. oh. And now it's Kilbo's turn. <laughs> okay. Jesus, okay. What? Right. Um, no. Yeah. 
So it was okay. that just how loud it was, it just made everything vibrate. Okay. It's a super loud one, yeah. No Did damage, I, luckily. I, I told you I wasn't feeling very well. <laughs> Get ready for some shenanigans. <laughs> Um, oh, wait, so, you're, so you're currently submerged two foot underwater, but you Joe can breathe under it. Come speeding through like a little torpedo. Uh, he's going to double attack with his main hand and offhand. I haven't got an advantage, so boo. Um, that, I assume, nine's going to miss. Nine misses. And offhand is a 23. Oh wow! So your offhand hit for uh, four damage. Ugh. Four damage. And then I'm going to disengage. Whoop. Which one? Which one was that again? Number three went for you. A B C. Three, three damage. Because of cunning action, uh, I can disengage and stuff um, as a bonus action. So I just disappear, <laughs> just run away. Back under the water. Got it. Yeah, so the Fume Drakes, they can go up to 30 foot um, as well, just so people know. There's a attack distance. Um, Devon! <laughs> How does that should get over there? It's just... <laughs> Did I move it by mistake? Possibly. No, I was, about, I, well, I was about to say, I wouldn't stand there if I was you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Uh, I thought I must have moved it by accident. Uh, so, is that number one you're going for? A uh, great sword, yeah. Uh, 21. And. That hits. Number one, uh, eight yeah. damage. Number one, let's go to five, eight, eight damage. Yes, your great sword goes straight through it, but it's obviously there's no blood or guts coming out of this one. But you hear like a hiss in like sort of noise as you hit it. Mm. Mm. The fume drake, which is now obviously next to you. As an attack for the death burst, this is its main attack. Or it has a bite action as well, so there's a few different moves it can do. Um, can I can I dash around it, or would that? Uh, You're not me. A... <laughs> well, can, can can he not perform dash as a secondary? I don't think you've got. Action? I don't think you've got dash, have you? Every you've got, you got like dash. Screen, yeah? Everyone can do dash, but dash disengage. And hide. Disengage, yeah. I want to go around it. Yeah. So you that you I'm can... still facing it, but um, I'm facing this one, but with my back to the top one, if that makes sense. Or would that, uh, uh, or would that mean that it would attack me as I'm going around it? Would I have to roll for a save? Um. I mean, if you were trying to get to here, like that. Yeah, like wheel around it. You would have technically had to do your normal move, because you had more than enough normal move to do that, so you would have been able to go all the way around yeah. and attack that way instead of... Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty warned you that if you go behind it, you are putting yourself at a weakness as well, because you've now put yourself... In the attack range of two of them, rather than one. True. Rather than one. True. But he has high armor, right. and he has a disadvantage that could be at an advantage. Oh, I see what you're doing. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? So could I make it there and have done that? Uh, yeah, you could have moved, done your normal move to get to there. Okay, because that's what it would have been. I just thought I would have had to have done the dash to get. No, because if you um, dash, that's a double move, and that's a full action for you. Yeah. Uh, right, okay, fair enough. I'll just 
Yeah, I'll have to keep measuring. The life puts half is they get a lot of nice little perky bits. Oh, this is because I'm a rogue. I can, I can. Rogue, sorry, yeah, because yeah, yeah, so yeah. And that the white thing, they can pass through people as well and this stuff. Game, which is like an extra yeah. thing. I can just do absolute shenanigans. <laughs> oh, one thing you could do, Devon. Don't forget. Um, you, you you can give up a spell slot and smite the bastard. <laughs> that, I mean, that's a full action, though, right? You can't no, do it now because you've hit him, but you next one you can. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's just yeah. Yeah. Is it a full action or that's is it fine. a bonus to your attack? Hold I on, let me. it's a full action because it's special. It's because it's your doodad monk. Or do you mean, like, is it a cantrip? I think. Let me double check. I can't mm. alphabet. I can't alphabet. Lay your hands. Rogue. No action. Oh. When you hit with a melee attack weapon, you can expend one spell slot to deal 2d8 extra radiant damage to the target plus 1d8 for each spell level higher than the first. No action. I'll, I'll remember that in future. So yeah. it's on, on, on the hit. On the yeah. hit, you can decide you to then... To use that to expend it as a yeah. spell slot. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So instead of going, I'm going to do a spell uh, instead of an attack, you go, I'm going to hit it and then I'm going to hit it really hard. <laughs> yeah. Sort of thing. And you lose your, oh, yeah. you lose your spell slot, though, I think. Yeah, you yeah. do lose your spell it's slot first. Once a day, isn't it? Yeah, uh, once every day. long rest sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. But if you've got two spell slots, that's two slots of smite. Mm. Two levels, I think. Right? Yeah. So, it's going to turn to you, the one you attacked, and it's going to try to bite you. It rolled a 23. 23. Uh, to hit. What, what save? What, what save? 23 to hit. 23 yeah. to hit. Oh, 18 yeah. armor class, so it's, it hits. So it hits you, and it does free fire damage on the bite. Is that it? So free damage? So it hits you. Free damage, yeah. Awesome. Okay, 25. Sorry, just stay in the water, you'll be fine. You're immortal. <laughs> yeah, so if you stay in the water for two turns, you'll get a um, a chance to roll your okay. health plus your constitution bonus to get your health back up. Oh, it's okay. only when you're in the water. Right, right, right. Um, Astrid. Oh, that's why I'm staying. I'll walk up to this one. Yeah. And use my longsword to um, hit. You, I think you picked on the name of the longsword rather than the dice. Dice. Oh yeah. yeah. Just come up with the explanation yeah. of it, description rather than the. Yeah, standing again. Yeah. Oh no, I. I... And the dice. That normally happens when you get the description. Um, what's your character sheet? Character sheet. It should just come up. Was you using your longsword? Yeah. Doing the same. Yeah, it's doing it. Same thing, yeah. That's strange, isn't it? Just roll it on D and D beyond for now, not on the um turn off your extension on, on the roll twenty. On the Chrome extension, just click on it and disable it for now. On your Chrome, you've got like the extensions. You can disable it. Okay. 
Let's test it there, it should work now. Yeah, it works on roll 20 without the thing I just rolled. Do you have to turn it off? On your Chrome, there's a next to the Beyond 20 red B, there's a little square icon extensions. Click on that, it opens up a little pop up. Go to Manage Extensions, click on that. And then where it says Beyond 20, there's like a little blue box that's been turned on. Click that to turn it off, that disables it, and then you can just roll your, D to your Beyond 20 normally. Long sword to hit. You rolled a nine, so you roll your sword misses. Quite hard, um, these, isn't it? Yeah, they've not got the lowest of ones of the armor class. Three. Hello. It's your turn. Can I aim for uh, the one that's sort of above me on the map? Number three, you're going for. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I use my longbow. Uh, Seventeen to hit. Your longbow hit. And got ten damage. Nice. That one is number three, so that's C. Do you, do you, your bow go, arrow goes straight through it. You hear another. Had the arrow sort of passes through and disintegrates uh, as it passes through. Number three. Number three comes down to you. Hi. Oh. My match, say tell me now. And it goes for tree. It does the same attack, the bite attack. You rolled a natural 20. Oh dear. So it does four plus crit one fire damage. B, number two, turns towards Devon, and it's obviously got an advantage because it's behind you. So it rolls. Let's see, attack on. Going to roll to hit you. And then roll again. It rolls a 17. So it hits for 17. 17 and five fire damage. Your health's quite good now, don't it? It's gone up to like 30 odds, wouldn't it? <laughs> and now to kill though. Now I get advantage. Uh -huh. Two nines. Uh, 14 to hit. It hits. Cool. Uh, so that's one of those. Plus one of those. 
for a grand total of 14 damage and then uh, I don't think I'm going to hit on a 10. That one is dead anyway. 14 damage kills it. Oh, okay. Fume date, but um, I need you and Danny to roll a DC 11 constitution saving throw because which you have now discovered from this bit happening. Oh shit, I wrote a 10. <laughs> right, oh you God. both take when um, now you've discovered this, when you kill one of these fume drakes, they explode into a cloud of noxious fumes. Each creature in five foot of fume drake must succeed on DC 11 or they take a 1d8 poison damage. So you've taken five damage each. Oof. But that one is now gone. And then I do this. <laughs> in the water. <laughs> so you just kill it one, I was dead. We now go to Devon. As a yes. yes, okay. So, um, how many turns until your next hit? turn? You'll get the heat next turn. All right. So, I will do the great sword, the one that I'm facing, which is the one that Astrid is facing. Um, advantage on that one because it's facing Astrid. 16 hits and nine damage at number one that's a so your great sword comes down splits it in half it is dead but in the beginning uh, of it right. it's the same process it's now gonna um eight dc 11 <laughs> Yeah, eight. So you get hit, and Adelia, um, Astrid, can, if you can roll yours as well. Constitution save. You take one damage. Both years, unless the Delia saves, you take one damage, Devon. Okay. I can turn that one off. Um, Constitution save the Delia. Um, it's on this on your list of saving throws on your sheet. <laughs> That's better than what she rolled in. <laughs> better, so yeah, you don't get hit. The flames sort of just go around you, and you're like, oh. Oh. untouched. But that one's now gone. Yeah, so it's right. now Astrid's turn. There's only one left now, and it's the one in the middle. Natural 20, isn't it? That uh, is a nat 20. Uh, yeah, nat, nat 20, you hit. Double damage. It should automatically sort the damage up. So. If you roll your damage one. Yeah, it's done, in it? Quick, yeah. Yeah, because it's 2d8 instead of 1d8. 
Right, so this one is now gone as well. Oh wait. No, it's not. It's not. Too carried away then. It's not, it's still alive. Still alive. Comes back to the tree. But yeah, you smash it. Steam and flames come up a little bit. But it still lives. What did you want to do, Shree? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just like... <laughs> we're all just like... We're all just like... I'm away. Um... <laughs> uh, from this angle, if I was to try and use my longbow, would I just be like hitting an arrow through... The two people in my path, or is it fine? No, you can step forward one. <laughs> step forward one square. You can't see Kilbo. He's underwater. Yeah, but you can step forward one square, and you've got perfect at it. So, or two squares. Yeah. Let's do, let's do one for that. Kilbo's been underwater for a half hour, roughly. So he's got not even to breathe. I, uh, and then. Oh wow! Ooh. Is that a crit as well? Two crits in a row, isn't it? Damn, son. Yeah, so you fire the arrow through, hit it, it explodes. So it is dead, but everybody around it now needs to make a saving throw. So it's only Astrid and Devon that need to make the saving throw. Against the burst. <laughs> I'm underwater. <laughs> 19. You save. And you save. You both save, so the fire just comes around you. Doesn't hit you. You're all good. And that human drake is now gone. So if you are damaged, you've now got a chance to get in the water. Collect one more load of mushrooms if you need to. But you've cleared this entire area of the fume drapes. Yeah, I thought I chowed all of them. But okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. If you want um any more, you have to roll a 1D4. Is it 2D4? 2D4. 2D4. Pick up any more mushrooms. I'll I'll take some more after spending some time in the water, so I'll have another four. Yeah, that's that's fine. I'll take some more after spending some time in the water, so I'll have another four. So you got four more? Yeah. So Devon, you can now roll your hit dice for your health increase as well. What? So it's your hit dice plus your constitution modifier. You can do mine as well, which is... Okay, so my current health plus my constitution. So your hit yeah, dice... On so your through. sheet, your hit dice. Ah. Yeah. Underneath your... It's like a little thing that says hit die, I think. On your sheet. Yeah, I'm looking on my sheet. Um... I think for you, you're 1d10. As a holla la 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 din. <laughs> yeah, because my constitution is plus two. Um, yeah, so it'd be 1d10 plus two. Okay. Uh, let's do it here. Uh, 11. So yes, you gain, you, you gain 11 hit points. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, I gained... 18. 18. So I'm going to just swim around some more uh, while we work out <laughs> what we're doing. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm going to uh, pick some of my is it? So, that's two, 10 three, minutes. So Kilbo you've, has now got two more turns, roughly. But yeah, 20 minutes, because that was the last one. Underwater still. Oh, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Do the same again. It's free health. Free health. <laughs> 
And you've got to be under 10 minutes. You've got to wait another 10 minutes before yeah, you fine. can... Um... We need to talk to the mushroom people, don't we? Or just give them their food? I don't know. Yeah, where's the, where is the mushroom people? It's not here. This was a random encounter on the way to it. Oh. Yeah. Um, okay. You need to, you need okay, to link okay. to the east next to it on the sand shore to carry on. Can, can we can we play a game to pass ten minutes? So can yeah, we so take a short rest? <laughs> you can take any rest now, yeah. Or you can just jump in the water. Okay, because I think a short rest is like an hour. <laughs> yeah, that'd be enough. Yeah, you'll be dead though, because unless you get out of the water. <laughs> I'll, I'll get out. I'll poke my head above the water, obviously. <laughs> but he's still resting. Um, all right, and I'll pick some more mushrooms actually. <laughs> Just... mm -hmm. So I've got a yeah, so good supply. Everybody do do another rest and pick their mushrooms, and then obviously you want to get to the next bit before the tide rises as well. So and they're what thirty each? Thirty gold each. Yeah, right. thirty gold pieces right. each. <laughs> yeah, I've got sixteen mushrooms. <laughs> So what you roll, is that how much you get? It's how many mushrooms you pick, yeah. How many mushrooms you pick up, yeah. Oh, really? Okay, so... You picked up nine, yeah. I, I, and I, I oh, rolled no. again, oh, wait, so and I got seven. Um, seven, yeah. So but, seven, I yeah. Two, but I had two, two, so that's 14. Because I rolled again and got a seven, so... Yeah, I had two, so yeah, 14, okay. You what me. are they called? I've I rolled again after I got out of the water. When I got the health, I got more mushrooms. Before I got. Oh, you rolled before. before. You mean mushrooms previously? Yeah. Yeah. So what, what were these mushrooms but, called? Yeah. What were they? They called? are. They are called wind spore mushroom cap. Wind spore. Wind spore. Q Q Q. Thirty gold each. Has everybody got mushrooms that they want? Did you get any Ashford? Yeah. yeah. Might as well do a short rest. Guaranteed health. So you, if you do a short rest, um times it now. Four hours. The tide's <laughs> gonna be up, so you're going to have to take your, your thingies to try and swim to the next part, if you can. I think you got not to necessarily get... take a full short rest, but just like a half an hour rest sort of thing, just to heal up. Do a half hour, then just jump in the water and roll your, roll your health things. Yeah. If it's only half hour, yeah. Um, I didn't bother rolling. Technically, it, technically that's half hour would be three rolls. Yeah. So I'll be back on full health. Even if I roll the lowest number, I'll be back on full health. So everybody, let's just say everybody's done their roll for their health. Yeah, yeah. What I'll do is I'll bring people back to this next bit. So you've come off east and you're heading now towards the, what it's called the Seagull. Let me move that. The Seagrove Cave. It should all just appear, hopefully. Ooh. Here there be mushrooms. Ah! Hey. Well, so. def definitely uh, imagine that the vine that's behind everyone, considering that he's got gurgling guts and he's carrying a sack of compost in front of him. <laughs> Before we proceed, let me just drop some things in there. <laughs> um, let me give you a couple of images so you, so you can see them. So you progress. Ah, making it. So, 
A cliff of dark grey stone towers 200 feet above the crashing waves. So that's how high that um, edge of the cliff is. Uh, which rush in and out of a yawning cave mouth. A swirling slick of colours dances on the water surface, emanating from the cave. So you've been pre-warned previously by Tarek that um, he noticed something at the cave where he couldn't actually enter it. And to be careful of what he's seen. you wish to do Ash? go let's are you all separate or use heading in file to, to the cave mm -hmm. so that cliff as you're walking around is 200 feet high as you approach it so keep it as keelbo approaches and tree approaches um where's my button gone Everybody has to stop where they are now because you now notice water bubbling up from the surface and you see this monstrosity up here, which is what um, he was talking about when he when he said he saw like this weird fungusy octopusy, not knowing what it was. Um, It should appear on the screen. Does it appear on roll 20 when I click on it? Can you see it? I can see it. Yeah, there's that weird. It's just underneath me slightly. I don't know if I do that. You can just about see it. Ah, uh, yes. Squid boy. <laughs> yeah, it should, it should pop up on the screen. I don't know. One might What's say not? that space is. Occupied. <laughs> oh no. One second, I'm gonna get it to so this is a giant octopus but made from fungus. It's um someone rolls like a a nature on it. That'd be true. <laughs> Tree would be the one for nature. Yeah, 12. So you know that um, this is a fungal creature. It's not a normal octopus. Um, and you believe that it's actually been put there not as a um, an invasive species it's actually like almost like a self-defense weapon do you believe it's actually made by the people that were there which now makes you a bit more confused because you were obviously told that it's a friendly place that the myconids liaise with dragon's rest quite frequently so now you are wondering why have they placed a fungal octopus as a self-defense weapon what is happening inside So it's called a spore servant octopus. That is actually what it's called. So is it just sort of come up right next to us? Yeah, so you see the bubbles as you're approaching, and then it lifts its head up, and you see like this giant fungal thing with eight legs popping How up. close to Kilbo? Oh, the... very close. Because he'll like... probably do his classic thing of, ah, and stab it. <laughs> you're on the edge of it so you're five foot away from it when it okay. comes out the water um so is tree um so it's obviously it's not it's only got five foot distance on land but it's got 50 foot underwater so it's not um it has got a reach though um 15 foot so it can hit you up to 15 foot away from where it is as well Oh dear. <laughs> Let me load up this octopur. 
what you also notice, because the octopus has splashed out and caused a bit of a noise, it alerts also to oh, two of these things, which is up here. There we go. What are these things? Does anyone want to do a nature check on them? Do they recognise what they are? I got an 18. What? Yep. Yeah. I also got an 18. Got, that's been like, oh no, no, no. I thought I knew. they look like those things. Um, what they are, they are still. Oh, so, a sturge. You can explain to what a sturge is. It's a tiny blood sucking beast. Um, this horrid monster looks like a cross between a large bat and an oversized mosquito. Its legs end in sharp pincers and its long needle like probocious slashes the air as it seeks to feed on the blood of living creatures. So it's like a bat mosquito. Uh, it's it's nice beautiful. Too. It likes to suck on your blood. So there's yeah. two of them hanging on the ceiling, being alerted by the noise of the boar. So if everybody wants to run their, one second, let me just boot this up, run their um, initiative. Jesus Christ. Six. Six. Okay. One. Astrid, 18. One. <laughs> I've got a two, but it's minus one initiative, so it's a one. So we start off with the Sturge on the left. So we call this one the first one. The one nearest to Kilbo gets the first attack. Oh, no. So the Sturge, obviously, is... <laughs> one bite at them and he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to attack... Kilbo. Uh, Capri Sun. And in the movie, it's, it's um, move is called Blood Drain, so it, it tries to bite and then suck the blood from you. Great visual. So to hit eight. Yeah, no. It misses you, so it goes <laughs> on your leg as it tries to bite you and misses. Who's next? Astrid, sorry. Oh. <laughs> Are you muted, Astrid? I can't hear you. <laughs> yeah. No. Ah. Well, I sound muted, but... Oh. Re reboot. Ah. Oh. 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 Hello. Hey. Hello. There we go. It always comes back when I rejoin. I don't know why. Ah. Um, so... I thought you were very quiet. I know you're not the loudest yeah. of people in general, but that was like super quiet, and I was like... <laughs> then a rich winner, she... What do you want to do? So in front of you, you've got this giant um, spore octopus, and you've got the two sturges at the back. Um. Can I use guiding bolt? Yeah. You can. Sixteen, uh, six to hit, I think. Who was that 
So who's you aiming it at? This one in front of me. The giant octopus. Yes. So the six doesn't hit. It misses. So your guardian box bounces off the sides, upstairs and off. Lighting up the beautiful cave inside. How pretty. Dirge. B, the one nearest the tree, now looks at tree. Does its like weird peeking biting noise and goes to attack Blood Drain. To hit fourteen. Fourteen. If it hits, so it does five damage to tree. Ow. <laughs> Wait, what's trees? Wait, what's trees AC? Fourteen. As a fighter, we need to get you better armor. <laughs> yeah, I'm a class fourteen. Yeah. The fact that Kilbo has a higher AC than you is ridiculous. <laughs> Devon and Ashford have got 18. <laughs> Kilbo 17. 17. <laughs> yeah. You got the embraces, didn't you, as well? Which yeah. pushes you up too. Yeah. The tankiest rogue ever. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so, what happens now? It does piercing damage for five damage. After each of the Sturge's turns, you'll just lose, lose 5 1d damage due to blood loss. Huh. So it's, it's actually stuck to you, and it's going to do 5 blood damage every time now, until someone kills it or knocks it off, or you knock it off. Um, the Sturge can detach itself by its movement, so after it drains 10 hit points of blood from the target, or the target dies. So it then can detach, come back, but it's now attached to you. So its next turn, it will just do five damage. It won't, it won't attack to hit. Huh. <laughs> it's like a really annoying mosquito stuck to you. And now yeah. we go to the octopus. And the octopus yeah. looks at Killbone. Big arms. And it uses its tentacles to swing and hit Silbo. It rolls a 20. Ow. <laughs> and does four bludgeoning damage. Four? Four. I was expecting more. Oh. You know what you get from tentacles, don't you? A sucker punch. Uh. <laughs> you now land on tree. Can I stab the thing that's on me? Yes. <laughs> you sure can. Okay. I am going to use my dagger. Mm. You hit. <laughs> Uh, and you, yeah, you literally straight into it, pick it up, all the blood that it took out of you just drops back into you, right out of your face, and it's dead on your blade. Flop it to the floor. So what you've learned from these sturges as well is they might be annoying, but they haven't got a great um, hit points. They're not the toughest. Hello. Hello. 
Um, it's going to use his main hand uh, attack on the octopus. You don't have the octopus, uh, yeah. Which is an advantage because I'm next to Astrid. Uh, not Astrid. Someone's within five foot of it. <laughs> Three. Three trees, yeah. <laughs> so I get advantage. Uh, 19 to hit. 19 uh, hits. Four damage plus six. So 10 damage in total. Yep, the octopus gets done for 10. And his offhand rapier is going to stab um, the other thing. Lashes around. I think a 21 is going to hit. Jeez. Oh, four damage. So the spores still alive, but now really angry. Bring any tentacles around. We land and on then, the bomb. <laughs> Hold on. More shenanigans. <laughs> I'm now going to hide. So I go into stealth mode. Where are you going and to hide? Hold on. Let me double check how I hide. Because <laughs> being so small, I can actually pretty much almost hide in plain sight. Um, where, 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 where would hide be? Playing the game? So I could just lean against the cliff face and hide in a shadow because I'm so smooth. I just need to find hide. Meh. I assume I'll have to do a stealth check. Let's see if I get hidden. Hide action. See under action. For fuck's sake. Good action. 189. We've got next. Divine as well. One of the, um, double check that Sturge is gone. Hide. When you take the hide action, you make a yeah. dexterity stealth check in an attempt to hide. Following the rules in Chapter 7 of Hiding, if you succeed, you gain certain benefits as described in the Unseen Attackers and Targets section. Yeah. So basically, yeah, I go into stealth mode. So um, I think I could probably yeah hide against the rocks of the cliff. These rocks, these rocks are 200 foot high, yeah. So they must have some shadow I can hide it. Um, it basically it would give anything um, trying to attack me disadvantage. Um, yeah. Too many rules, because then being a halfling, I'm super stealthy anyway. Pardon me. I can attempt to hide even when I am obscured only by a creature that is at least one size larger than me. So technically, I can hide from the octopus by hiding by the octopus. with the octopus. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want a stealth check. Stand uh, right under its eye. <laughs> Eleven. Out of sight. Not turn kill, though. I'm done. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, um, your turn, Devon. No. <clears throat> no, I've finished doing bullshit. Uh, uh, so if you um, so that water is fifteen foot deep, so you can't walk across it. What this bit here is? This water is fifteen foot deep here. Yeah, that is a yeah. big octopus. Yeah. You think, uh, so, the way to look at it is these cliffs are high. Um, when the tide comes in, it fills all this up to at least up to um, past the stairs. Yeah. Which is why Tarek was talking about getting there before the tide rises. Uh, 
Oh, I'm sorry. It was there, right? Can I do a yeah. javelin from here? I think so. You're 25 foot away from the range. Yeah, 50, 50, 50 feet range for javelin, but where yeah. Ashton is standing there, can Devon throw a javelin? All right. Oh. Uh, yeah, you can. I mean, Ashton technically is there. I should be there. I think it's where the thing clicks off. It's not a perfect map size. Mm -hmm. With that, I mean, that would be a 20. I don't know why it's not showing, but that's a 20. I rolled a 15 plus 5, so 20 to hit. You got 5, you rolled a 5, with a 5 bonus, you rolled a 10 to hit. 15 plus 5, so that's 20 to hit. There's the 15, I've got no 15. I've got 5 plus 5 to hit 10. Was it a 5? Is it 15? Yes, okay. 5 plus 5. Alright, so 10. So you throw your javelin at the Oxford, yeah? Mm -hmm. And it misses. It's used through the water into the bottom of the steps. Damn it! <laughs> and now we go back to that first surge. That has to roll with disadvantage because it's got very good night vision as well, so it can see kill both. Technically, um, uh -oh. let's have a look. One, and take the lower number. What's the lower number? The first number was 25, the second one was 16 to hit. So no, because you are... 16 See, that's misses. Better, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what's, what's the 25 he got? Must have been a... Yeah, green, so it must have been a critical. Yeah, it was a natural 20. Um, <laughs> yeah, 16, so it misses, so it doesn't get... If you have the same one goes up to and goes... <laughs> he just can't get the bite on you. So you've got his, like, these little hickeys on your cheek when he's trying to bite you. <laughs> I'm not in, um, Astrid. <laughs> Astrid. Um, Your mic's not working again. Hello. Nineteen. Okay. Nineteen. What are you going for? The octopus. Yes. So you hit. You hit. And eight damage. What was this? Sword. Yeah. So the octopus is still still alive. As you smash your long sword into it, it splashes around again. Um, Sturge B was killed by now back to the octopus. So the octopus now can hit up to 15 feet after being hit by Astrid. It's now got its attention on Astrid. So it uses its tentacles to swing at Astrid. 22 to hit. And 10 damage. So it comes down and it's just... Oh, oh, knocks Ashford flying back. For 10 damage. Bludgeoning damage. That would be the big oof, as they say. Yeah. It now is tree yeah. <laughs> uh, 
think I might use my great sword. Yeah, so you got the storage in front of you to your left, and you put that octopus directly behind you. I want to go for the octopus. That feels more yeah. fun. A bit of calamari, you can dice it up. Um, you, yeah, that hits. And ten so tell me, Tree, how do you wish to make your calamari? Can I, like, cut off the tentacle? You want to what, slice through it, or do you want to grab the tentacle and slice through it? Like. So you, you walk up to it from behind, grab the tentacle, just go straight through it, bring the tentacle around, bring the sword up, straight through the middle of it. Blood oozes over the top. It's just floating there. Seven legs left. <laughs> Pretty stylish. And now it's Kilbo. Cool, I'm gonna stab this fucker. <laughs> um, oh, with disadvantage, uh, with advantage, I suppose. Oh, I'm gonna take the crit. Ah, you're gonna fucking die now. <laughs> oh, it hits. Um, take 15 damage. <laughs> it, it, it's dead. I mean, do the hit points for a sturge is two. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> There is no more stir, just so I can say. It's like that. Just... <laughs> it is gone. And you've cleared that first part of the area. There's a fucking octopus in pieces. There are two squat Well, there's one that was pierced and stuck to the ceiling almost. And there's one splattered against the side wall by a sturge. All right, let's get in here before the yeah. water rises. You have, have steps leading up and VCT. This 50 foot high cavern is a forest of multicolored fungi ranging from tiny filaments to tree sized mushrooms. A natural staircase of stone columns along the east wall leads up 10 feet to higher cave areas in the north. Water burbles down from the upper cave and collects in a large pool. Two small mushroom-like people are working amid the mushrooms near the pond. A sickening smell like sulfur hangs in the air. So this is a big old cave. And there's like a smell of sulfur. So if you look, there's two. And they're called... What are they called again? Mushroom... A different name now. They've got a, a name which I wrote down. Called again, myconid sprouts. So they're like younger. Put them in you there. Well, then, no, put there. No, you put there. And they're sorting out and they're laying down fertilizer um, within the ground. Is there. You look up and you see two more which look larger, more adult. Under the cave, they need a water. And they're doing a similar sort of task. They're sort of scattering scraps of food and stuff on the on the floor. Hello. What? Come here. Oh, you are you here? Hi. I just need to remind Kipro as well that he can only speak reverse. That's what I'm saying. Hello. <laughs> Are you friend? Are you friendly? Why are you holding your nose? Friend, Here. yes. Bring food. Here's just... your... <coughs> Ah, who, who sent you here? 
Cover. Cover. Sorry. No, no, no. Sorry. Why? Why do you? Why do you act like this? What is the matter? It's been so bad. Kilbo's gonna hand I... hold out his uh, silver flask to Devance if he wants. One goes Narsa. Mullen grabs the bag of food. And he runs off to the side. Froze runs off to the side with him. And they're going through the food scraps now. Oh, but they're God. Easy, quite hey, easy man. to begin it. It's a very strong smell of um. I said sulfur within the air. Hmm. As we said, there's a pool above rushing down water. There's steps to your right leading up. There's two adult looking mushroom people at the top. Um, but there's a very strange. Yeah, smell within the air doesn't yeah. seem quite right. So as you approach and you walk through this area, you see these. They're like purple looking. I'm going to show you a better picture on here, actually. This is what they look like. Yeah. Yeah. So, does someone want to do, like, a nature check or a thingy check on him? Um, he'd probably nature check. Jen? Taste tech. <laughs> Yeah, ten's enough. They are, oh, they're called violet fungus. So they're purplish mushroom that use root-like feeders to creep across caverns and floors. Um, they use four stalks protruding from their central mass to lash out at prey. Um, rotting flesh with the slightest touch. So on contact, they rot, rot the flesh. Um, so as you stand next to them now, Kilbo, one of them sends out like a spore towards you. Really like trying to grab at your at your skin. I will backflip away from it. <laughs> There's one next to Astrid as well that then reaches towards Astrid's leg to try and grab her leg. Touch, don't let. No, wait. <laughs> you touch them, let don't. <laughs> Kilbo says and and dives away from the one trying to grab him. So the these are they're not friendly. They are actually dangerous and. Let me just open up a thingy. If you all... Actually, don't do it yet, because I need to... Right, tab. Put someone in. Oh, it's not letting me in. One second. Nope, not that one. That one. You all can roll for your initiative. Because you, you already know that they are... Um, an aggressive fungi. Eh? Uh, 17 for me. 6. What else we got? Eh? 6. Um, 9. 10. Oh, 3 goes first. What, on a nine? Violet fungus. Oh, it came from a tree got 20, yeah? So I rolled a nine, and I rolled a seven. Yeah. 
Let me um update that. Now it come up, repopulates your rolls onto roll twenty. When you type them in, there you go. I've changed it. Right, it's killed my first. <laughs> About to say. One second. Let me just let me it through. Yeah, when okay. you roll your dices, when I have the sheet opened up for combat encounters, it just populates it for me. Ah, uh, where's the pin? Some reason it it put a twenty through. I don't have ping today. Ah, so there's one right in front of me there, is there? And tree. There's one growing next to Astrid, five foot away, and there's one on the stairs, ten foot away from Devon. So I get advantage, so I will go with the 24 to hit. It hits. Uh, so that would be a grand total of maths. 13 damage with my main hand. 13, yep. Is it not dead? Nope, not yet. Uh, well, it's going to be because my offhand is crit. Whoa! Hey, that, that, that one 16. is dead. <laughs> it's fucking. <laughs> that one shrivels up into nothing. So this one is no more. They sort of hiss and then heave down and it just shrivels up into nothing. Um, for some reason, I'm on there, not me. Right, number C. So this one is this one. On the stairs, it. Sort of moves down towards the van. Uh, that way, atrocious abomination. I mean, I only can move five foot at a time as well, so then five foot to the van, and it does its rotting attack towards the van. So these start like, arms come out. And it touches, so they don't have to roll to hit. They uh, roll and grab. So it yeah. touches for four and sort of rots a little bit, so you get four damage. Oh, okay. So it goes through armor. Yeah. These got all little spores that break open, pit go through. Four damage. Okay. Four. You got full health now, anyway. Yeah. Mm. Astrid. There's one below you, and there's one above you next to Lee. Yes, the one um, above me. And. It is a launch. Eight to hit, it hits. Yeah. And does ten damage. So that is that one. You slice into it, it still lives. And then it's tree. Where so I'm struggling to see where they are because the yeah. Um, where one directly are? below Astrid. If you zoom in a bit more on that plus thing, you should be able to see it below Astrid. Violet fungus. I'll oh, ping it. Oh okay. yeah, I can. There. Oh yeah. There's one, and there's one just next to Lee. Uh, Devon at the top. Just there. Okay. Um, can I hit it with a dart? I think the one on the staircase. Maybe? On the stairs, yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can go for a dart. 
Oh, yeah, that hits. Ah, no, pushed the wrong button. I've got to go back. Hang on. Mm -hmm. And I got seven damage. Oh, it rips right through one of its grabbers. Devarm. So these little things like this, it's gone straight through one of them. They've sort of gone a bit floppy, but it's still got loads more coming out. I just have to go for a good old smasher rooney a great sword the one in front of me 24 to hit that hits wait no no it's not good. 14 damage and that was c so you kill it you split it up into multiple pieces if you wish to or just cut it in half how do you wish to finish it Maceration! <laughs> right on the sh on the chef channels, <laughs> on the cooking shows, right. it's gone. We we, we have we have uh, calamari uh, el sushi with uh, a macerated uh, mushroom fungi du jour. There we go. What a, <laughs> what a wonderful feast! This last. Violet fungus swinging around now goes towards Astrid again, swings at her, and it's brought in touch attack. 11. One damage, necrotic. You're right, your armor class is 18, isn't it? Your turn, Kilbo. Yeah. I think we're both wearing plate armor, aren't we? Wearing plate armor. Mm -mm 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 yeah, you might have the same armor, yeah. I don't know what Ashley's wearing, actually. Is it just this one left? Yeah, there's only one left. That's it. I'm gonna stab it in the face. Da -da -da. Advantage. Oops. Roll. Eesh. Uh, 13? Yep, hits. Uh, 7. Damage. Yep. Is it dead? Nope. Off the attack then. <laughs> 11? Fish. Now it is diced mushroom. <laughs> no more. Uh, seven damage. <laughs> that one. Now it's super, super diced. It's um. Tell me your favourite mushroom dish. That's what it is. I don't like mushrooms. <laughs> no. He is no more. Or he, she. The fungus is no more. It is gone. They, them. Goo goo. Yeah. <laughs> One word. So if you walk to your right up the stairs, you've got this, this water going through. There's two adult mushrooms. Further on to your left, there's another entrance that bends round. You see more sort of mushrooms in the distance. You can sort of see these sort of baby mushrooms like modern and crows you saw previously. There's um, a group of them standing there as well. So, Devon, you're approaching the top. To the adult ones, right? Yeah, so they are... Two adults at the top. And they're again they're doing the same thing of um working on their van, I guess you could call it. This first one up to you and goes, Oh, you gave food to Modern and Kraz, I saw you do that. Yes. 
Tarek used to bring us food. Is Tarek okay? I'm Rugasos, and this is Hipsis. Uh, pleasure to meet you. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing what you were just saying right now. Crumbling and possibly blowing. He was going to come, but he couldn't come, so he gave us the sack of uh, food. Yes, food. Yes. Uh, well, we appreciate it. More than we've tried to we've tried to stop people coming into the cave, but it seems like maybe you've found a way. If you go uh, further into the cave, maybe you can find a solution to help us. Oh yes, yes, yes. Deeper into the cave, you say? Wonderful. Yes. Uh leave yeah, the sign in, so it's not very well. You wouldn't have to have anything to hand to a Settle an upset, an upset tummy, would you? Oh. Roll your d20. <laughs> the right. ghost goes, what do you mean? What is wrong with your stomach? Uh, Are you not well? I drink something that maybe I shouldn't have. <laughs> and you roll a living, yeah. which... Uh, you can fire your fart in any direction up to 25 feet, but it will cause uh, 1d6 fart fire damage. Okay. So I have to aim now. Yeah, yeah. any direction you want. All right. Yeah, so, so... Don't, aim it down, don't aim it down the stairs because you could hurt a few people there. <laughs> no, 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 this way. Yeah. All right. You do a fire bar across the water, and luckily, what you didn't know is that there was another violet fungus sitting there, <laughs> and you've killed it with your fart fire fungus. It just dissolves again, melts away. I stand corrected. Maybe I don't need a cure. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I've never, yeah. I've never seen that from a, a human before. What an amazing ability! It's, uh, it's not I would really advise really one really. thing, and I need to say as well: all this communication is telepathically, it's into your mind, into these. I would advise that may, maybe you need some new trousers in the future. <laughs> the the Devon, regardless of it being telepathic, he's still just shouting. <laughs> I, I say again, I've never worn underpants. I'm completely naked under all of this armor. Thank you very That's, much. <laughs> that is probably a good thing right now. I would advise as well, be careful. Metal gets hot. And the more fire you produce, the more you may hurt yourself. I've never heard of such trifle, but deeper <laughs> than the cave, you say. Thank you very much. <laughs> Where would you like to walk? Rugozo and Hippaz carry on doing their muck spreading and their food loitering. You can go, obviously, towards this um, south entrance. This you approach this area. So as you approach here, the cave reeks of rot and the floor is covered with decaying vegetation. Three small mushroom folk are working amidst, amidst the filth. In the southwest corner of the cave, a bulbous object the size of a cart clings to the wall and ceiling, glistening like a glob of jelly. So are you all going into that area? or? Yeah. The van's there, so... <laughs> you see three of these... Um, young Mike needs again, and one goes. I've, I've, I've just, I heard some crazy noise a minute ago. I'm Bispo. This is Valop, and this is Popple. 
we saw what you did. You gave us, you gave gifts to Monan and Kraz. They are our family. We are currently spreading muck. Are you? Have you come here to help us? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, we can help. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, if we have time, we don't want to drown. But yes, yes, yes. We, if we have time, we want to help. Sure. Yes. In, the, yes. in in this area, they're all doing their muck picking up and they move it from this point, the larder, into right. the previous area, which is the fungus farm. You know, it's a giant bulbous in the southwest corner here. Um, a bulbous object that clings to the wall like a glob of glistening jelly. So do in nature and there, are, there are stairs that need to knock. Uh, yes, you can. Do a nature check. So bad. 14. You need to. You're not quite sure what it is. Um, yeah. Anyone else want to do a nature check before? I'll do one. I'm no good, but let's see. Let's see what he does. 16. Right. So you know, it is a nest. It's actually a nest. As a nest, uh, uh. And then as you look closer, you realise it could be a sturge nest. No, oh, no. It's one of those bastard mosquito things. Um, right. Devon walks towards the nest and he's now five foot away. As he does that, the nest twitches and shakes and pops oh, and wiggles no. and then you see this and this is one of those um will they won't they sort of thing trigger responses let me just see if it all comes up okay well within the twitching can devon turn to the little uh mice in it and go you there you there how do i calm this thing down why is it here Oh, this map is. Uh, this map has a lot of things on it. <laughs> is anything appeared on the screen? So the nest actually opens up, and then you hear a flapping noise and a rustle. Bastards thing. Oh, come out. Ah, there's multiple bastards. They they all fly out into the area. As they do this, Popple runs out the area. This pop. Runs out the area, and that runs out the area. They I think eight sturges. Yeah, there's eight sturges. All flapping around like back in the field. So take her off for initiative. <laughs> Roll for initiative, yeah. Yeah. Uh, dear. So the encounter. Sixteen. Sturgy times eight. Eight. There we go. There we go. Ah, six. <laughs> hmm. What did you get, Devon? Eight. Sixteen. Sixteen. Things were. Things were. What did Tree get? Uh, Eleven. Astrid. Five. Five.
So here we go, the first Sturge. Yeah, everywhere, there's eight of them. This one here goes for its nearest person, which is Kilbo. How dare you? And it goes for its, its um, suction bite attack. To be fair, none of them got you yet. Every time they try and do it, they just end up giving you like a little um. <laughs> Can't touch this. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Uh, rolled nineteen. Ouch. And then hit for five. Ignore that. Hit for five. Rolled the wrong thing. There we go. Blood drain four. four and now it latches onto you. Four damage, yeah, it holds onto you. So it's next turn, it won't try to hit you. It will just take five damage unless you kill it straight away. Okay. Yes, it's one. Okay. Then we have Sturge A. Which is this one, which goes for Devon. Bastard. <laughs> and it's the same thing. It's going to go to hit 15 plus 5 is 20. So it hits. Ah. And then this is suction damage. <laughs> Four. So that, that one is now latched onto you as well. Ah, get off. Get off me! It's on my back! I can't reach! My shoulders are too broad! <laughs> Surge A and... Surge B. So these are like big flappy things everywhere, but it's now it's Devon's turn. So... It's A that's on you at the moment. So it's on you. Stuck <laughs> in your blood. The one's a bit kinky, he probably enjoys it a little bit. Oh, I reckon he'd be like, oh, it's been so long. Is, is it in a place that I can attack it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, then I'll attack that one. Um, hey, there are you. Um. <laughs> 21 to hit. You hit? Five damage. And he is dead. No one oh, damage me without my permission. You slice it off of you. And that one is gone. You now go to... There are so many sturges. Let me just delete that one now. My roars. <laughs> He's gone. Anywhere to collect it back. This Sturge flies over to you and goes for you as well. And this one is Sturge. <sighs> Sturge F. Luckily, their hit points are only two, so they're not the most um, dangerous, I guess. Uh, what's this one? It's not updated on my thing. 12. What? 1 do 20. Plus 5, sorry, 17. Doesn't hit. So he comes up to you, goes to thingy and misses. It bounces off. Now we go into Sturge B, Sturge F. That one is Sturge E. So Sturge E. Sturge E. Flies, 5, 10, 15, to, oh, over to tree, and goes to bite three. 11, 
16 hit and it does its bite damage one which is four so Sergi has now attached itself to tree it biting onto her is now sucking her blood and now it's tree's turn Kirby stab. I will gonna use my dagger on the one that's attached to me currently. Astrid. Some bad coordination. Thirteen. So that's a mission, isn't it? Yeah. So it, it yeah. misses you. Your arm. Oh. Um. Now it's Sturge D. I don't know what I did. I'm. I lost. Um. Audio. Just a second there. So. Oh really? Yeah. I was like, it's gone very quiet. <laughs> Oh, no. Sturge D jumps at Kilbo as well. So Sturge B is already attached to Kilbo. Sturge D is now going to try and attach to Kilbo. So he's going to have two on him. No. Do not. He misses. God, there's so many Sturges. This book said put in this amount of Sturges for these level characters. I only got two hit points, that's probably why, but. There's a lot of Sturges. You could Sturge H. <laughs> flies down and goes for Devon. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> and does he hit? No. So he goes to bite you, he misses. And then it's Kilbo. So it's Sturge B is one that is actually attached to you. Okay. Um, I'll, um, stab that one. Go to B, yeah. Yeah. Um. And I won't cheat this time because I've just realised I've been fucking up. <laughs> um, that's what I was looking at, and I think I've, that's how I ended up pressing the button. Um. But yeah, I've, I've I've been. I just realised I haven't got proper two weapon fighting yet, and so therefore I'm oh, okay. doing things wrong. So, so that twenty five hit earlier, on the one yeah. hand. Ah, so right. I, I can only attack with one of my rapiers at the moment. I need to get the ability to use both of them or do right. something different. Oh, efficiency. Which, yeah, as well. I, I need actual two weapon fighting. I have two weapon fighting. But only if I'm dual wielding light weapons, which rapiers are not. Are that the finesse? The finesse? These? No, they're specifically light weapons. So, like a dagger. Okay. Right. Or they have to be of light quality, which they would be. You know, yeah. It would specify. Oh, you definitely hit anyway with the rapier. I saw you. Yeah. So, because uh, someone's within five foot of me, so I get my sneak attack, so it's dead. Very dead. Yeah, that one, that one is B. That's B is no more. And then, ha ha ha, I can still do this though. Uh, take the way. What's this one doing? 
That one is attached to three. Cool. I'm just going to disengage and hide over here. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> well, disengage. I can disengage and I can move through tree because I am small. A small, yeah. Astrid. Astrid, your one didn't bite you. It missed, so you're okay. I think one of them is attached to Devon still. That's H. I killed one. No, no F. F. There were two that's been one killed, a six F left. Attached. One's attached and one's not attached, yeah. One I killed and one missed. Yeah. Got these two here. You killed A. Jilbo killed B. Astrid's got C in front of her. Can I go for the one? Thirteen. You swing your hacks and you miss. You swing right past it. So Sturge G, which must be this last one up here, Mr. G, Addy G, Sturgey G. Sturgey G. What's their movement again? They can fly, can't they? 40 foot. Yeah. Five. And... 15, 20, 25. There we go. And then it goes for Astrid. So it's going to try to bite you. 14, so it misses as well. So it then passes through back to Sturge. B, who was killed by Kilbo. Sturge A, who was killed by Devon. So that's Devon's turn. Can I do cleave with my greatsword? I don't know, buddy. It's, it's just a hit, isn't it? But yeah, but of... it, it's like one, one per long rest, if I could. Because I'm proficient in, my, in, in using the greatsword in two-handed weapons. So can I do Cleave? I've never heard it before, Cleave, if I'm honest. Cleave just means that I can do the same damage to uh, uh, multiple... Uh, no, there's no Cleave. Charles on where there's no Cleave in D&D. I've never seen Cleave yeah. using it. There yeah. is, if you're a fighter, a word? there's a... Um... Oh, is it a fighter? Yeah, it's the um... right. Battlemaster archetype of the fighter. You, you can, can re-roll a one or a two on damage, right. guys, with many attacks when you're wielding him two hands. Yeah, you've got yeah, fight, no, no. You've got fighting That's style. what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, it's uh, it'd be a fighter thing then. Yeah, I'm just getting confused because I thought a paladin would be able to do that as well because it's a two-handed weapon. But uh, yeah. if you're doing, okay. have you got great weapon fighting? Yes, he has. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Roll one or two of damage dice when you attack. Make a melee weapon. You're doing your two hands. So you roll the two-handed weapon. You can do it. Yeah. yeah, that's quite cool. Um, There's no cleave on your thingy. Eh? You got that great yeah, weapon fighting. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Man, that's, smart, what um... asking, that's what I was asking. That. Yeah, but it's a fighter thing. It wouldn't because I'm a paladin, right? So it wouldn't. Yeah. Um, so let me. There's two now, right? That are... there's... Technically, there's three that can hit you, but B is trying to attack Asteroid. H. And F are the ones who are attacking you. Was there seven then to begin with? Eight. Two have been Eight. killed. Okay, so we've killed two. Okay. Yeah. Um all right, then I'm going to um how do you ping right? D 
this one or attack that one. Yep. Just go through F. Yep. Twenty-two to hit. Hits. And seven damage. And F is F all. He's gone. Bye bye, Mr. Sturge. Is another splat attack next to his nest. I'll move him off the map there. Just so he's gone. The F is gone. And F was next to attack. So now we go to Sturge E, who's the one who's biting on tree. So he just does five damage to tree. Um, let's roll that. To suctions, five. So that's five damage to three. So after that one, it's actually Tree's turn. Um, I'd like to attempt to dab it again. You want to keep, did you do the five damage? Sorry. And you're gonna dab it, yeah? Yeah. That is number number letter E. Oh, well, I've done something wrong. Yeah, I think you had seventeen left. Twelve, yeah. Okay, I've managed to give myself two. <laughs> um but yeah. kill. Is it yeah. updated? Yeah. Back to seventeen. So what is it supposed to be now? Uh, you got five damage. Let me just enjoy it and do it correctly. Okay. I think it's cool. I tried to press too many times. And okay. it's the one that is E is the one that's biting you, the one to your right. Yeah, so it's down. Yeah, I go. Uh Eleven. Eleven. Eleven misses. <laughs> Where? You, you, but now it now it detaches from you. It took ten hit of blood, but it's no longer on it. So now it has to try and hit you again next time. But you do have potions as well. I think if you do need to take a turn to use your potions to heal, you can still do that. Um. But yeah, that one is detached. And Sturge C is the one that was attacking Astrid. He's now going to attack Astrid again. Natural 20. So double. It hits. And it jumps on you and does seven biting blood damage. Oh. Lyric blood. Not that it talks, but that's what it's thinking. <laughs> Dirge D is now on its own, so that lies over and goes for Kilbo. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Twenty-three. Yeah, that'll hit. <laughs> and then it should be it's five, four, four blood fucking damage, and it latches onto you. Bastard. <laughs> now we have H, who goes for the Vaughn. I want you these little flying buzzers. Come at me. It misses. It goes for an A, it goes for a bite, but just bites. Back to Kilbo. But of what you can chew. Uh... Cool beans. Um, is it this one that's latched onto me? Yes. Okay, I'll stab that one. 
<laughs> but I get advantage. Splatter. Twenty-four. Yes, twenty-four hits. And get wrecked. Sixteen damage. And that one is no more. Another splatter cake. Into the wall. Bye bye, Sturgy D. Um, so your eight has now become four. And then I can. Da, 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 da. Right I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move over here because I can. Nope. Whoop. Hello. <laughs> Astrid. So it was C that attached to you and did the damage. So it's now biting on you. G to your right um, is the one that missed. Um. I'm gonna hit it. Gonna hit C, yeah? Yeah. You hit. That's 22, isn't it? Yeah. Roll for damage. <laughs> I failed. Oh, so Seven. Yay. You smash it off and you. Back to it all over the place. Third C is no longer sucking your blood. Um, Sturge G now, where is it? This one here goes back and tries to get Astrid again. Fourteen, so it misses. Astrid beats it off. Go to Sir B. He's dead. Sir J. He's dead. Devon. Go for the other one that's right in front of me. That's trying to attack Kilbo. Trying to kill Sir H. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh. <laughs> So, uh, 21 to hit. Yep, hits. And 12 damage. And he, it is no more. Third H is splattered everywhere. This area now, not watch this. Not so. Got splattered insect everywhere. Um, that one's dead. That one's third. E, which is the one that detached from tree, can now reattack tree to try and reattack tree again to try and bite her again. <laughs> Eleven. It misses. It misses. Doesn't get its second chance to bite. Tree now can retaliate. You say I can retire. You can retire. You can hopefully finish it off. <laughs> In theory. <laughs> In theory. <laughs> um, okay. How about a dart? Um... You're gonna dart it. 180! <laughs> oh, no, okay. tree. <laughs> oh. You throw your dart and it flies past its head, goes off into the water in the distance, missing modern and Kraz by inches. I hate mosquitoes. Sorry. I a giant mosquito. <laughs> hmm. What there's this one this. and this one, yeah. Neither of them are attached to anybody. I will move over here and stab 
This one. Going for E. E's quite full in blood, so if you do kill it, it's going to be a massive splatter. Sweet. He's taken night over 10, 10 hit points of blood from 23! Hits. Surge E. 7, 8, 9. And. Bree's very thankful for what you've done. She's like, ah, oh. but as you splash through, the blood just goes. Thank you, <laughs> he is gone. He is gone. And then there was one. And it's now Ashwood's turn. To be fair, for our weak they are hit points, they've done a fair bit of damage to you. Yeah, was that blood sucking thing? They've done a bit. Hmm. Astrid. I'm a below half health. You hit. So I'm going to assume that your damage will finish this one. Finish this one. With your long sword. Your long sword. Right, Dan. Gone. Gone. And there were no more Sturges. That room is vacated. Empty. How do the I... nest is empty, broke. Produce and sulfur. There is no more Sturges left in that area. This smells very bad in here. 